Yeah, good morning and welcome to the first Asafio video podcast. Today we will talk about uh, event-driven architecture with uh, SAP Event Mesh and the services around the Microsoft Azure platform. Um, first of all, we want to discuss why is this relevant? Why is this relevant for SAP customers? And, and also why is event-driven architecture the new paradigm we see everywhere for system integration? Um, before we start, let me say hello and good morning to our three experts in this topic. From Microsoft, we have Holger Brochel, the Program Manager for SAP Architecture. Hello. From SAP, we have Martin Bachmann, the Product Manager for SAP Event Mesh. Hello. And from SAPU, we have uh, my fellow Peter, who is the Managing Director for the Cloud Integration Services. Good morning, Florian. Hello. So, why did we choose this topic for today and, and why do we offer products and services around that um, together with SAP especially? And this is um, first of all because SAP customers are asking for more integration, more integration technology and, and, and better concepts. So um, what we see everywhere is SAP data is so relevant in many situations, um, in many business cases. Uh, and these include also non-SAP systems. Um, IoT scenarios, very heterogeneous landscapes, and uh, digital sales, uh, mobile apps, logistics processes. And, and also, if you if you listen to the, the Gartner and other researchers, um, who say that the number of interfaces is, is, in, is increasing and it will increase even faster um, in, in the future and so we, we can we can expect to see thousands of interfaces probably for for SAP systems to be required in the future and because of that and because interfaces to SAP systems were always a difficult task um, in the past that, that usually required big development projects and and middleware solutions and um and, and also pain uh, always. Uh, this is this is why event-driven architecture is is so interesting to look at for SAP customers because it um, it simplifies so many things and um, and that's why we uh, want to talk about it today. And that's why I think Martin maybe want to start and lay out why SAP uh, works on this topic and then what SAP offers today. Yeah, thanks very much for the uh, introduction for inviting me. Uh, Florian, so so we see right now a lot of, of customer interest. So more or less every day we are in, in, in calls with customers who are, who are now researching or implementing uh, some, some aspects of event-driven architecture. And of course, they have questions, which role is playing SAP here? How can we leverage the data? Where, where is, uh, what can we do with the data and so on? I mean, there are a couple of reasons why to do this event-driven architecture. So uh, typically in the past, you, you did all the, the backend system every five minutes, something changed, something changed, and so on. So and that was adding so much load on the backend system that it really had no, no air to breathe. <clears throat> and so just sending out an event, so if there's a new business partner, if there's a new material master created, is just technically reducing the load on the, the backend system. That's, that's one thing. On the other side, um, the, the uh, processes in the cloud and the in innovations in the cloud, there are so many. So therefore, you can't just develop a new backend service or backend integration for every new initiative that you're doing in the cloud. It's just not possible, especially because the backend systems, as you know, are really, really stable and, and validated and, and, and so on. And therefore, it's important just that the system is sending out one event if there's a new material master and then whoever is interested, maybe today it's 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 five and then uh, next week it's, it's 10 subscribers, um, the backend system does not know about it. So that adds a huge new level of, of flexibility to that. So that's the that's reason why customers are, are doing it. And of course, we are answering their, their demand. So if, on the one side, we have the core service there, the sub event mesh in the cloud, which is our cloud based uh, event management system. So service and uh, based on that, that's the center of our strategy based on that. Of course, we need to get the data to come to the data. 
And here um, we have, of course, we get data from success factors. We get it also from the CX space. Keymar plays a role here. Um, but we also get the uh, the data now for, I think that's, that's very relevant for our SAP core customers. So from the ERP systems, from S4, from ECC, from NetWeaver systems. And here we just released uh, at Sapphire a new yeah, add on uh, for the uh, for S4 customers that uh, that will help them to define their own events and to add uh, uh, to define their own uh, customer payload on 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 that. So that's a it's a major step through. So we had already events, but they were predefined by SAP and they were they were great and doing a good job. But many customers had additional wishes for additional events for additional payload and so on. And that's possible now. So that's a big news. Um, another in, um, announcement that we did at Sapphire was uh, that uh, that we said we are collaborating now much closer with Solus with regards to uh, event brokers on directly on Azure, directly on uh, on Kubernetes and so on. And that uh, the product out there will come hopefully soon in a couple of months, I would assume on the SAP price list. Uh, so the teams are now currently working heavily, but the announcement is out. The announcement was done at, at, at Sapphire. And now it's just a question, when when will it be available for our customers? So as you see, we are doing a lot uh, for event driven architecture. We take it very seriously. We are, uh, we are adding a lot of capacity on, from our development colleagues to that topic. Yeah, um, not everyone is always on SAP uh, technology, so therefore open standards are important. So we look at AMQP, MQTT, and so on. Uh, rest not to talk about, but um, there, uh, there are also other things like cloud events, and 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 that's that's a, a standard that is also uh, followed by by Microsoft, for example, by by many others, and that's really helping because with that the events can e more easily be transported and changed from one system to the other. And um, so, uh, but let's talk more about the Microsoft topic directly by the expert. <laughs> so therefore, Holger, I'd like to hand over to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Martin. Yeah, exactly like like what you said. I think um, SAP and Microsoft, we, we're not only working here in the eventing area very closely together, and as you said, very transparently in the um, cloud events, um, Open Standards Committee. Um, we are both um, very, very active. I mean, SAP and Microsoft are very active in in this area, and I think this this is just a continuation of um, the partnership and a lot of other activities where SAP and Microsoft have been working in the past and um, very, very closely together, and where where we are continuing to work closely together. And what I find very interesting, and and Flo, you already um, hinted to that. Um, obviously. There are some really important events coming from the SAP system, but but similarly, if we take a look also on the Microsoft side um, with Microsoft 365, Office 365, the Microsoft Graph, we see also a lot of customers that are um, very interested in leveraging um, these uh, events as well. So uh, reacting to an incoming email, reacting to documents that are share um, that are changing in OneDrive or SharePoint or something like that, changes in Active um, Azure Active Directory. So there's also a huge um, base of relevant, um, important events that are coming on the on the Microsoft side, and that's where we see a lot of customers using the eventing infrastructure from Microsoft, like um, Azure Service Bus, Azure Event Grid. And obviously now we, we have on the Microsoft side um, these um, messaging tools, let's call them like that. And on the SAP side, as you said, we have SAP um, Event Mesh. Now, one of the things that we're working together is exactly to bring um, these two components much, much closer together so that um, a customer, if a customer is using SAP Event Mesh, if a customer is using Azure Event Grid, that they can plug these um, two um, components very easily together and then I don't know, build a logic app or an Azure functions that can really react um, to a um, change in a business partner on the SAP system. What I very much um, like about this whole concept is um, this uh, event enablement um, add-on that is now available that, um, as you said, allows um, customers to uh, yeah, expose um, individual events and um, bring them into uh, SAP event mesh and what the, the the beautiful scenario there is really that we we can leverage these um, components obviously um, also on the on the Microsoft side. 
Now, I think the, the the best person to talk about is 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 Peter for this to really um, talk about how um, these events can be enabled on the SAP side and how these events then can be sent over to uh, to SAP Event Mesh, but also obviously also to the Microsoft side. So maybe Peter, um, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Holger. Thanks, Martin. Um, so uh, great introduction from you guys. So uh, as we said, uh, we heard from you guys that we have requirements that we have to, let's say, fill the gap in between SAP systems and Azure or the SAP uh, Event Hub, the business, uh, the BTP. So what we are proud to say is that since last October, we have the uh, NetWeaver enablement add-on on the SAP price list, which is part of the BTP offering, where customers could integrate SAP ECC events into BTP. Uh, we're now happy that, as Martin had mentioned before, we, there was a press announcement on Sapphire that we are now also allowed to support the customers with S4 systems, which means, okay, the product is now the integration add-on for event-driven architecture overall inside SAP. <clears throat> we also use it for, for other productized integrations inside the SAP suite. For example, we have the fee class integration real-time based on BTP technology for uh, SAP uh, application. So coming from what customers need, as as was as already explained by you guys, is okay. Customers have not only let's say one object, two object, five objects. We talk about really lots of objects. We were very surprised when we talked to the first customers how many objects they really want to integrate, and what they they really have very strong expectations in terms of zero latency. They want to access all applications, not only ECC S4. They also talk about SRM or HCM. They talk about low effort for build because when you talk about hundreds of objects, I mean, you have no way to use 30 man days to implement an object. Uh, they want to have high ad adaptability because the processes that they are implementing on platforms like Azure are normally very flexible. So they have different demands and they have to switch the, so the software. So the, the implementation cycles of these infrastructures are much faster than what, what we know from the SAP side. So that was all the stuff that we put into the customer needs and try to, let's say, come to a technology that can provide all these things. So what we do in the ABAP add-on now is we are now able to do integration, first of all, agnostic to any platform. So we have a very strong uh, tie to Azure. We have, of course, as a productized integration into SAP event messaging or BTP. Um, that's one thing. So to set the infrastructure up is fairly easy, but then it comes to the core. So how can we leverage a very fast implementation cycle? And what we came up with is that we are now able to do a codeless integration. So to, you define a business object like a sales order, or, uh, whatever, an RFQ or whatever. You define the object just by configuration. You connect the object to the event that there are really thousands of events inside an SAP system, which we were able to leverage, change documents, uh, IDOC interfaces, you name it. And that way we could have a zero latency interface built in a couple of hours. And that's well, that was really surprising. I, I was even surprised that we could make that happen, but it's working now and customers use it and we get great customer feedback. And on the other side, what we also see to initially get these use cases triggered, we also need initial loads. So what we were also able to do, we have now capabilities for multi-threaded initial loads. So we have a customer as a reference where we could leverage 8,000 sales orders, for example, in one second for initial loads on multi-threaded uh, infrastructures. Azure is extremely well in consuming these data. And I think this is just all, so I think now we have all the tools to provide these, these uh, customers with the right tools. Uh, we have the first implementations live already. Again, feedback is great. And what we are now looking into is the, let's say, the journey from our integration into Azure now, as Holger and Martin explained, that in the future, Azure and um, the Microsoft, the SAP event hub will move much closer to each other. So what customers really appreciate, they started building content on Azure, that they can in the future use the same content, switch it over to BTP and then connect via BTP to Azure. So it's all very flexible. It's a very, very open framework. We all collaborate extremely well together, the technical teams of SAP, SAP and uh, Microsoft. And I think we've got a great future in front of us. So we're really looking forward to uh, talking to you as customers and looking for your feedback as well. Colin, handing over to you again. Yeah, I think I, I can wrap it up. Uh, thank you guys. So this is um, and also to the viewers. I hope that was good information for you. And uh, and if you have questions around all this event driven architecture, and, and I'm sure you will, because it is a, still a fairly new topic for, for some, um, uh, please feel free to reach out anytime. And uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, thank you guys. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Martin, thank you. Bye.